Hi guys, this is um, Anne with a quick anagram on this week's uh, multi-exercise multi coding task. Um, this is task number one in your slides. And um, you have seven small programs to write. And um, last week, I told you that you couldn't have multiple self programs in the same replet. Um, I was trying to make it clear to you why one of the reasons we're using separate REPLs and um, make sure you didn't didn't uh, get down a rabbit hole and get lost. But this week, you have seven bits of um, fairly repetitious code to write. Having Being able to refer back from one to the other and copy code from one to the other is gonna be really helpful to you. So I think this is the week to sort of pull back the curtain on what's going on with Replit and what, as a C++ programmer, you have available to you to use, and one of those is the command line. So, um, so my my daughter Becky, who teaches chemistry, says that the study of chemistry is is the study of learning all sorts of like really absolute facts and memorizing a lot of things, and then taking the next course and realizing that it was all a lie. Um, and actually, I think that is a perfect description of really digging down and getting to understand any topic at all, um, at least where skills are involved um, and where there are different options for things. Um, what you're going to find is that you learn a lot at the beginning of your study that is essentially um, the surface. And then when you are ready, um, you know, you're, if your instructor and you and everybody else in the universe cooperates, you dive down a layer and you realize that some of that stuff was, um, was a simplification um, there to protect you or to make it so that you could understand the basics. And now that you're ready to understand the next layer, you're realizing that some of that stuff is, um, you know, was in fact kind of a mask for the complexity that lies underneath. And, and that's, here's, here's your first example in this course. So um, going into our Replit environment, um, I have, oh, I'm gonna create a new one. So the cat allowed me to use his account again, and I'm gonna create a new REPL over here. It's gonna be a C++ REPL, and um, I'm just gonna do, call this week three demo, because it doesn't, match up with any particular um, code, it doesn't match up necessarily with a particular assignment. So I'm going to create that. Environment blinks and we get the standard hello world which we can run. Okay and you know they gave us code, it works uh, and oddly enough it runs, that's a good thing. But what perhaps hasn't been obvious unless you've taken a Linux class um, before, is that what you actually have access to over here in this console box is um, a little Linux virtual machine. So um, I think the right metaphor, the right way to look at this is that each replet represents its own separate little Linux environment. Because I haven't found any way from one rep REPL to reach out and find any files or run anything in any other REPL. So I think what happens is each REPL is a little, um, a little Linux sandbox machine. And we can even see here that it's an Ubuntu 18.4.1 machine. Um, so what that means, and we did this a little bit last time is that if you are over here and you're typing things in the command line, you can see what's actually going on in the file system where you've got the source code file that's showing up in your user interface, your GUI user interface here, but you also have a main which you can run using the syntax of um, in the current directory execute main. And that does the same thing as the run button. Now, if I add a file, and I'm gonna add a file called square.cpp, okay, um, and I will even just do this. Okay, so this is pretty much what I demoed last week, but this, this week I'm going to show you how to get around it. Hang on, fat fingering that. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. Um, and you do have a link to my article on um, shortcut keys that you should know. 
uh, please consider reading that and starting to learn them. They're going to save you a ton of time. So now I have two source code files. Each of them has a main function. And any single C++ executable can only have one main function. So if I run, okay, replit is configured so that when it tries to compile the source code in your environment, it tries to compile every CPP file you, it finds. And generally through the course of this semester, you're going to find that a super simple feature um, and really helpful that is just going to take care of pulling all of your stuff um, together into one build file. But this week, you need to be able to have seven different plus the main um, source code files and executables working in this one same replit. And to do that, uh, what you do is you become a command line programmer. So um, over here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, fat f and type this, and I almost always fat finger it the, the first time, so let's see if I can even get close to... I think this p thread um, argument is uh, actually optional, so remind me to try it without. Okay, we're defining what the object or the output file is going to be. Okay, and what we want is we want to compile this code instead of that code. So over here, um, I want to have an have an executable name square. Okay, and I want to compile only the square dot cpp file okay so if i do that i fat fingered it yeah the plus plus minus syntax gets me every time now that's okay because i don't have to retype that i can hit my up arrow get back the line that i just typed in and um, hit enter time passes the compiler runs and we now can run square, which doesn't prove much. I should have probably done this. Now remember, if I rerun that after having made the change, Replit auto saves the source code, but it doesn't auto recompile. So if I want to see a change in a source code file be applied, I have to recompile. Okay, and then Again, I'm just hitting the up arrow. I'm not retyping these lines. I can see that. And then by the same token, if I um, do, I think the next one is remainder. Okay. Go to grab that. Because uh, I, do, I do urge you to save time in typing. And as long as you're not getting confused by old code, it really doesn't hurt to grab a simple outline like this and start from it. So now if I have remainder here, and I want to move on and work with and test a new, um, a new executable, okay, in a different exercise, I go up here and I can literally, and let's try this without the p-thread. So we want to compile, re into an executable called remainder, uh, which re does require a dash O. The output, dash O, is supposed to be an executable named remainder. And the um, input for the compilation is remainder.cpp. Time passes. And now we should be able to do execute remainder. It's a dot slash remainder. Okay, so that's how you work with multiple files. And as you go through uh, this week, what you're going to end up with is the main.cpp. I just leave that in place. And then a total of different seven different ones. Now, if I were you, um, I would at some point, oh, and you can do this in Linux. I can highlight this. Okay, um, get up a context menu, which, it, which in Windows is a right click. Okay, I can copy it, and I can actually come down here and paste it, 
But I, what I would recommend is that you paste that into some um, file or set of notes or whatever that you keep on your own machine, because uh, it'll just save you time uh, later if you can if you can get this line back without having to um, recompile. Because let me show you what will happen. If something happens like your plugin crashes or you go away for a while and you come back, um, let's see that line work. Okay, so say your plugin crashes, say you go away for a while and you come back, I can simulate that by hitting the um, refresh button here. Okay. And everything gets refreshed. I still have my code, la di da, okay. But I don't have that sample line here to work from. And so um, if you have your comp compiler command line commands saved someplace, you can simply go out to those notes, paste it in, and get started very quickly instead of having to um, do a compilation. Because once you get a bunch of files in here and there are a bunch of errors because you have a bunch of mains, that first compilation is just going to take a while and your time is valuable. So um, I think that's all for this one. I hope that's helpful. I really truly believe that it is worth your time learning this command line in order to, um, in order to under be able to copy code and look back and, and easily navigate between these seven small exercises.